Hello guys, my name is Colin. This is EOS Mega Update Volume 21. Thank you for joining me on Colin Talks Crypto. EOS is on the rise. I can't believe my eyes. Free transactions on my account, adoption to the sky. You know why I'm loving this? 12 character account names, instant transactions, and on-chain governance. Faster than all of the blockchains, you can't stop me. And when you delegate, don't forget to vote for my proxy. Block One and Dan Larimer got this hot-ish. Dropping bombs in June, make sure you watch it. Watch it. In this episode, we're going to cover Block One releases EOS IO Labs, Universal Authenticator Library, and EOS JavaScript Stable Version 20. Dan Larimer confirms EOS Stablecoin. Predict the new decentralized prediction market by Everipedia. EOS Phoenix Beta is live. Dan says Vitalik should leave Ethereum and join Block One. Block One iOS wallet will be open sourced. ITAM Game Store is live on Android. Dmail, not Gmail. Ledger app updated to version 1.2.1 to fix the Ledger integration. EOS Sphere compiles an impressive list of accomplishments. V accounts. Weiss ratings rates EOS among the top cryptos. The EOS user agreement. Constitution replacement. EOS has its own coin market capish world. And lastly, the EOS World Expo and the Block One announcement in June in Washington, D.C. Thank you so much for joining me, guys. And I wanted to cover a new topic called stake mining. I just released a video on this, but I wanted to add some more information. So first of all, what is stake mining? Stake mining is a way on EOS to delegate your bandwidth or your CPU to a new dApp to give them resources. And in exchange, you are given tokens as a payout. And currently these token payouts aren't very high. So I did that video from an investor point of view and thought that it was not a good investment, but there is more I learned about this and I wanna make sure that the full picture is known because I think actually stake mining could become a very big thing and I think it has a lot of potential, especially serving as a sort of venture capitalist function to help new dApps gain the resources they need to operate. Not all new dApps can afford resources. Using stake mining, it can give someone a chance to be an early investor in a new project by delegating them resources without all the regulations of ICOs. Stake mining is a superior model to Ethereum ICOs in this regard. You simply delegate resources to the project. Stake mining can be a benevolent activity that one can partake in to fund dApps that one believes in and also have a chance to get in on the ground floor with shares in their new dApp company by receipt of the tokens as the reward for delegating resources to that dApp. So rather than send a bunch of money to some new ICO, you just take your EOS tokens, you delegate the resources that you're already not using, and maybe it's the next Uber cab service, you know, Eva, and you delegate them a bunch of bandwidth because maybe they can't afford to buy a bunch of CPU or bandwidth. And in return, you're going to get some tokens and you could either sell those for EOS, sell them for dollars or just hold on to them. And as a sort of very early ICO function, you now have shares of these tokens in this company and you didn't have to spend any money and you just delegated them your unused resources. And I think it does have a tremendous future for helping out these really new dApps that may not have the resources that major, major companies have. In a way, it sort of levels the playing field of dApp creation because it allows newcomers to have access to the resources that they need. And those people who see that and invest in that company just by delegating their resources could come out huge with a bunch of tokens in that company as their reward. So stake mining very much could be the future of ICOs. Block One introduces EOS IO Labs. This is essentially a new umbrella over a bunch of different things they're going to be releasing. And so it says, at Block One, we believe in an open innovation model, open source. One area we have been actively exploring is key and password management. Wallets, as key managers, serve a critical role in the way users interact securely with blockchain applications. After much consideration, we have decided to release our work related to key management in a way that can be used by existing EOS IO wallets. That means Block One itself will not be releasing a proprietary wallet at this time. Instead, we are taking this opportunity to release our work as open source software. And by doing so, we hope to encourage ongoing improvements of the standards in the wallet ecosystem. We are pleased to announce the EOS IO Labs initiative. 
And as a part of this initiative, they have released the Universal Authenticator Library and the EOS JavaScript Stable Version 20. So before we get into that, let's back up one step. They did say that they're not going to be releasing a proprietary wallet at this time. So I don't know if that means just right now or also not in June 1st, but that's very interesting. So perhaps we won't even be seeing a wallet at all on June 1st. So if they have some major news, it's not even potentially going to be a wallet as some have suspected. So what have they released? Well, they have just released the Universal Authenticator Library. And to put this in a nutshell, what this is, is a very simple way to standardize integration and communication with EOS and wallets so that users have a way to very simply use applications and dApps. And one example of this is the Transit API that Alt-Shift Dev created. In fact, I feel like this is very, very similar to what he created. And if you've ever been on a page and had to connect with Scatter, connect your account with Scatter to use the page, that was a very, very common way of doing it and still is on many pages. But there's also an easier way. And like myself, I have a Ledger Nano S. I use that with everything with EOS. And when I connect, it's much simpler if I don't even have to use the scatter step. And if the page simply supports the transit API, which means I can connect directly to my ledger without any middleman, without scatter, and use the page. It just logs in, it finds my account on my ledger, and it lets me use it. And so the Universal Authenticator Library is very similar. It allows the same thing. And so we've already had it, but it's great that Block One is releasing this because it gives tools to developers. And just diversity, as always, is excellent when it comes to decentralization in development. So that's what the Universal Authenticator Library is. And the EOS JavaScript Stable Version 20 Today, we are excited to announce the promotion of EOS JavaScript version 20 out of beta to a stable release. The changes in the release mark a further step towards more secure and user-friendly JavaScript development for applications built on EOS IO. To create a seamless, secure user experience, we believe blockchain applications should almost never need to access a user's private keys. So Block One is definitely on board with user security in mind and making this as easy as possible to onboard the masses because the masses do not need to and won't deal with private keys. They just won't. It's not a practical thing. We are because we're the forefront and we're the forerunners of blockchain and crypto technology. But to get billions of people on, we need to make it as easy as possible. And the end users should almost never need access to a user's private keys. So stay tuned for more things from EOS IO Labs. It's awesome. They've created an initiative to release free things, free tools to the EOSIO community. All right, and moving on to Dan and Telegram. Dan has been very active lately, communicating with the community, which is awesome. And someone asked him, hey, Dan, is your stablecoin model still in play for EOS or will it be experimented on BitShares instead? And Dan answered and he said, my stablecoin ideas are pending legal review before publishing. So they are coming. He has created the idea and they're working on getting that approval. They do everything very officially. And he explained even further, my idea boils down to combining a short position and Bancor and using Bancor fees to automatically re-collateralize and using a price feed to nudge Bancor price in the right direction when the market fails to for too long. That's a lot of uh, technical talk, basically saying that he's got a system in place that balances the price. And Bancor basically makes it so that you can never uh, push the price of something to infinity or to zero. It always approaches that before running out of liquidity. And so it's a self-correcting mechanism. So his USD stablecoin um, involves this technology. So it looks like he's hot on it and definitely working on it. And we will see it at some point, probably not soon, but in the future. All right, and we have a new prediction market to be built on EOS by the makers of Everpedia. It's called Predict, P-R-E-D-I-Q. T, IQ tokens are used in Predict. This is by Everpedia. So as they said, they're going to be creating a slew of dApps and they're all going to be running on the IQ tokens. So if you have IQ tokens, probably not a good idea to sell them, not financial advice, but I won't be because they are creating a bunch of cool dApps and Predict is one of them. So I look forward to this. It's coming very soon, by the way. It's coming in June 2019. So just in a couple months, maybe June 1st. Looks like everything's lining up for a big release in June 1st. And EOS Phoenix, so it says, introducing the first fully on-chain, high-performance, and scalable exchange ecosystem on EOS. Get started on eosphoenix.com. So this is out now. It is for beta testing right now. And they've got a little animation here. I guess this is their logo. 
and there's some screenshots of what it looks like. Let's just go right now. Let's go to usfinex.com, see what happens. Boom, look at this. And here we go. And if you look at the timeline, you'll see that in March, it's the beta launch. We have just seen the beta launch. So if you want to use it on the test net, you can do so. And I haven't tried it yet. I'm just waiting for the full release, just like with the Rex. I just want to use it when it's out and it's official. And in May 2019, EOS Phoenix exits the beta phase, and then it will be open sourced in June of 2019. So I think that perhaps behind the scenes, this hasn't been announced, but Block One may be using EOS Phoenix to release its decentralized platform, its decentralized exchange, instead of having their own block one version. EOS Phoenix may be it. It could be wrong, could be a separate one, but uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. I think in June 1st, we'll have some more answers on that. And EOS Phoenix gives a tutorial walkthrough on how to use it. I'll put all these links in the description below. So if you wanna try it, you definitely are welcome to. All right, and some more exciting news. So Dan said, again in Telegram, Trump's advisors know about block one. Everyone in Washington, D.C. wants to talk with us. So Brandon alluded to this and look at where their base is. Their headquarters is in Blackstone, Virginia, and that's very, very close right across the border from Washington, D.C. And they did that on purpose so that they can be in close proximity with the government and so that they can help integrate blockchain with the government as opposed to having sort of a headbutt mentality and it's us versus them it's let's help them understand and use it to better make transparent solutions for the government and if they don't want it okay fine but if they do hey we're all the better for it so that's awesome trump's advisors know about block one and then dan said vitalik and i could do great things if he would step away from eth and you know i can't disagree with him there there are both incredible minds, two geniuses in the space. I would love them to work together. I think would be the most powerhouse team. Maybe someday they will. They both are able to step away from their egos, I feel. So maybe someday we'll see it. You know, it really depends on how ETH scales and that sort of thing. But can you imagine the amount of uh, price and market confidence in EOS if Vitalik did jump ship and came over? It would be utterly incredible. So Dan is, uh, you know, welcoming him, taunting him, enticing him to, to come over. I don't know that he will, but uh, we hope so. ITAM Store has gone live at last. All these incredible games we saw in the previous trailers are now live on the Android Store. iOS is still in development and they're working on it, they told me, as fast as they can because they know that they have a lot of iOS users. So you can do it now. You can play around and test the games on Android. Um, but if you have an iOS device, you are still waiting for it. Dmail, a sneak peek. So what is this? It's a new app, a new service on EOS that allows you to send email to other EOS accounts using tokens to reduce and eliminate spam. That way that if spammers want to send emails, they have to have tokens. And so it's sort of a cost barrier to spammers. I know that if you're like me, you get dozens upon dozens of spam emails. And in fact, you may even like me have fake email accounts just for the spam because you don't want to sign up with your real email address. So Dmail is coming to EOS. Check it out and they will be airdropping some tokens. So stay on the alert for that. And it says email messages will be signed through the mail tokens. So that's the name of the token, mail, allowing users to send emails to each other. Most people using Dmail won't ever have to buy the tokens as there will be an airdrop soon. The beta version of the service will be released on the EOS mainnet and then ported to other blockchains, not just within the EOS IO software. In future versions, we can also expect it to work with traditional emails. So they are going to merge it with traditional emails and it's going to traverse other blockchains. But look at which blockchain they happen to start with, EOS IO. And I don't know if you guys noticed, but a couple of weeks ago, there was a period where there was an update to Chrome browsers and it broke functionality with the Ledger EOS app. And so that has been fixed. I think that EOS New York jumped on that and helped that happen. So props to EOS New York as usual. And so now we have Ledger EOS app version 1.2.1 in the Ledger Live Manager Store. So make sure you update that. Make sure you set arbitrary data back to yes if you update your app because it'll default to no. And you will again be able to use your ledger with Chrome and with Transit API and with Block One's Universal Authenticator Library and all these great things. And I liked this tweet a lot from EOS New York. They said, We don't pay attention to ratings much, but Coin Market Cap, CCID, and Weiss ratings have all placed EOS at number one. And Bancor, Loom Network, and Wanchain are all building or have built integrations with EOS. If you're ignoring EOS, ask yourself, what am I missing? 
And it's so true because we saw that coin market cap had the FCAS ratings and it was rating EOS number one, Weiss ratings rated as number one, CCID rated EOS as number one. So again, there's a lot of haters out there, but they are missing the boat. You know, this happened on Ethereum as well. People had the wool pulled over their eyes and they missed a great opportunity. And I see that EOS is the next great opportunity. So don't miss out if you've been on the fence. Check it out in depth because I promise you will like what you see with EOS. Don't just believe the FUD. Don't just believe the hype. These ratings companies are not lightly rating EOS. They're not just throwing it out because they're not paying attention. They're looking closely before they put their stamp of approval on EOS. And I put my stamp of approval on it too for what it's worth. Maybe I should have my own rating system. Maybe not. Okay, so why EOS Sphere? I just wanted to showcase this as an example, an exemplary demonstration of what a block producer should do to promote themselves and to showcase what they are doing because voters just frankly don't know and don't have the time to sift through all the millions of articles on the internet. They should create one article that shows everything that they've done, all their accomplishments, and EOS Sphere did a tremendous job of that. EOS Sphere is an Australian-based and registered business and headquartered in Perth, Western Australia. And they go through their entire achievements, their development team. And I mean, just look at all this. This is all the stuff that they've done. And they have a link to back up every single thing they've accomplished. You know, they produced a community video in three languages. They've created an EOS News Digest. They've participated in EOS Genesis Snapshot, etc. And I think that this list of accomplishments speaks for itself. And that's why Colin Talks Crypto Proxy is proud to vote for EOS Sphere. And I just really encourage every other block producer to create a similar document, everything in one place. And then we could compile a list of all the block producers and all the documents and make it a lot easier for voters to participate. But till then, vote for me, your proxy, Colin T. Crypto, and I'll take care of it for you. All right, moving on. Another awesome tweet. US New York is on a roll. They say that free accounts are coming to US DAP users. A tiered system of EOS users could emerge, a casual user and a standard user. The casual user's public keys are stored in VRAM, secured on-chain by the user, and can be converted to a standard user at request. And this is involving that whole V accounts thing. Virtual accounts are possible now. And as it says here, requiring new users to buy RAM in order to create their accounts introduces unnecessary friction into the EOS system, making it more difficult for the network to scale. The DAP network can remove this roadblock for developers and users alike, enabling DAP developers to onboard new users by offering them V accounts, free virtual accounts. Developers could streamline the onboarding process for their new users by offering them V accounts unique to their DAP until migrated. And it goes on to explain how perhaps these virtual accounts could actually expand to work with more and more DAPs. All right, Weiss Crypto Ratings puts Bitcoin aside, US and XRP. And here's their ranking system, and it has rank one, two, three, Ripple, US, Bitcoin, A, A, and A, all tied for first place. So again, if you haven't been paying attention, US is hot. All right, the US user agreement is a constitution replacement, and it needs only 15 of 21 block producers to approve it. And guess what? We have 14 of them. We only need one more block producer before it goes into effect. So please, be peace, put this in place. Actually, we have a total of 20 block producers who have approved it, but all the ones in orange are outside the top 21, and so they don't count. So after you subtract the orange ones, we're down to 15. So we need the likes of Bitfinex or Laomao.com or Liquid EOS or Sweden Org or Hello EOS to approve this because we want to get rid of the ECAF officially. We want to have everything on chain. We just want to have a lot more clear cut user agreement that crosses the boundaries of different countries and communicates clearly and concisely to all different nationalities. And again, this was produced by EOS New York. EOS New York, I would say, is one of the top five block producers. As you can see from all the tweets, all the community collaboration, all the initiative taken to do things like the EOS user agreement. So I'd put um, EOS New York in the top five. I'd put EOS Authority in the top five. I'll stop there because everyone will wonder who the other three are that are in the top five. I might have to make a list sometime. And EOSGo.io is a really cool resource for a coin market cap-ish sort of a resource. Because when you go to coin market cap, as we're all familiar with, you see a list of all the cryptocurrencies, right? Well, the same thing goes for 
eosgo.io, and here's the list, and let's click on view more. And as you can see, all these tokens are just in the EOS space. None of these are Ethereum tokens or any other tokens. We have 181 tokens in the EOS crypto space. And so you can see all of them in one place. Really exciting. We have uh, all sorts of stuff I haven't even heard of. Node, All Star Foundation, Pay to Mat, Everpedia, there's a good one. EOS Black, sold that one a while ago. Unlimited Tower, Own, Oracle Chain, etc. So check out eosgo.io. All right, guys, and we want to see you at the EOS World Expo 2019 in San Francisco. I'll be there, and I hope you'll be there too, April 13th and 14th. I will be doing interviews, and I want to do like a collaboration where I put all the pictures I take with you guys and the really short little video clips and put it together in a video afterwards. So if you see me, come up, say hi, get a quick picture. Please send me the picture if I don't take it myself. I want to have all of them and put them in a video. So I hope to see you at the EOS World Expo soon. And lastly, Block One's announcement in June 1st, like we said, it might not even be involving a wallet. How crazy is that? What huge, huge announcements might they have? So we will have to wait and see. I'm pumped about that. So I will hopefully see you guys in Washington, D.C. for that announcement as well. Okay, guys, that's all I have today. I hope you enjoyed the little wrap at the beginning. Please share this video. Please like, please subscribe. Take care and have a great day. Go EOS. Bailey the Crypto Cat is here. Let's do this rap, Bailey. EOS is on the rise. I can't believe my eyes. Free transactions on my account. Adoption to the sky. You know why I'm loving this? 12 character account names, instant transactions, and on-chain governance. Yeah.